This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, On team. the show today, you're going to hear about the dangers of wearing high heels. Yes. Well, that's very dangerous. Very we will dangerous. talk about a new millionaire and he's wanting a fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, that was good fun, actually. Yep. Well, we find out if, um, if uh, straight men put flowers in their houses. Well, we do discuss well, the, it, well, the answer's no. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about kids in power. And you're going to hear a chat we had with Tim Jarvis, who's made a, a movie about uh, Shackleton, who was an Antarctic explorer. This is Nathan Nat and Sean. We good. Yeah. On Nova 937. Let's go. It's five past six. Welcome aboard, everybody. A fresh week. A oh, long week. working Five. day. In a Can't row. Can't wait. Can't it's wait. so... Shocking. Disgusting. To everybody who went to Ed Sheeran last night, feeling fresh. Sean McMahon. Yeah, the eyes are burning a little bit now, but it was a massive show, obviously. A yeah. record set it up to stage. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone would have had a cracking time, no doubt. Uh, today's show, we're doing something we've never done mm. before. We have a competition where we pour water into a glass mm. <laughs> and people have to f- hear how full it is. Now, I know no, what you're no. thinking. You're thinking, how could that possibly be interesting? But we had a practice run we and were, you get very we competitive. We were doing it on Friday. <laughs> you very And competitive. I swear to God, it's the new PS2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's on the paper, new PS2. Sounds, on paper, it sounds lame, but don't, just forget no, about no. that No, no, take our word for it. it. Yeah, this yeah. is the most yeah, exciting yeah, thing yeah. we've done in Asia. Yeah, money up for grabs while doing it as well. Yeah, that's right. how good is your ear? when you hear water being poured. <laughs> no, really. So there's someone out there going, about time. <laughs> yes, finally. About time. For holiday accommodation more comfy than your trackies, jump on the What If app. With hotels, holiday rentals, holiday parks and more, find the perfect fit for holiday you. Book your getaway on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. We were all searching for the person that won the $40 million oh. because, strangely enough, they never told us where that ticket was sold. I know. That's I bizarre, mate. Understand. Which is so unusual. Did they Did they explain why? Because, you know, when no, we always no. check our tickets and we come in and, and you know, Nat, you'll yes. go, oh, someone in Subiaco won. Yeah, that's or whatever right. whatever the case is. Yeah. But, no, that's so really bizarre. It was sold in um, at Springs News in Bennett Springs, right? Yeah. Okay. The, well, that the, makes sense. The bloke bought a slip pick 18. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that all? That's one of the I lowest know, ones I in it. No, I always go no the investment highest. There. I always go of the course. highest. Of course, you want it more opportunities. Yeah, and I always get one of those, um, yeah. what do they call it? Power plays. Power play, power play. So I'm thinking, is it because they thought that $40 million is enough for someone to stalk the area. That's the only thing. And I then wait feel. for the regulars yeah. to go in there and then just kidnap a whole I mean you have to kidnap a lot of customers <laughs> before you found the right but one. But also you well, don't have to claim it. You don't go back to the place no, where no, you no, bought no. it to claim it. But that's why I'm just trying to So yeah, yeah, troubleshoot. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Yes. So if But you if have that's to the be case, the why place? tell us after? If yes. that's the case. Because now we definitely know that's where they're from. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't even narrow it down, down to north or south of the river or anything yeah. like that. It was it was very peculiar. Anyway, so he's a grandfather, which is great. Yep. I'm fine with that. Um, uh, he had the ticket in his pocket the entire week because I mean, old men don't wash their pants. Pres- he wore the same pair of pants all week? I think so. <laughs> That's a commitment. I think, think? I think at a certain age, you pick your pants for the week. Or were they talking about pants. a metaphorical pocket? As in... <laughs> no. As in no, he no, because he forgot he had... He forgot he'd bought yeah. it. So you wouldn't just... Because then he would have remembered he bought it. So they were literally just in the pants for the entire week. But don't you put it. your hands in your pocket at any point? Well, I don't know. Maybe it, was in one of his, maybe it was in one of his back pockets. I'm never a person to put anything in a back pocket. When you're playing golf, you've got to put everything yes, in the back pocket. I know, right, yeah. I know a lot of straight men put their point. phone in their back pocket, which is stupid. Because mm. you're gonna I would crack, do that at times, gonna, probably. Well, you, the junk you've got in your trunk, you'll oh, smash you that <laughs> phone into some brain, Sean. That's right, the gluteals. Mm, Jeez, mate. Um, uh, yeah, and then, um, so anyway, that's all great. Yeah, yep. And then his celebration meal, fish and chips. Discuss. Well, we all know it should be Chinese takeaway. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's a well, no-brainer, big sure. And, 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 n- and none of the fancy stuff either, the classics. Like, that's right. Like uh, beef chicken. and black bean beef sauce. sauce. Uh, uh, beef sauce, yes. satay, beef, yeah. lemon chicken. Yeah, chicken. fried, fried rice, rice, fried sweet, rice. Sweet and sour pork. Do you go a combination fried rice? Ooh. Oh, you will oh, go well, a combination fried lotto. rice. You've you won 40 mil. You want peas, you want those tiny prawns, you want all of it. You want a special fried rice. You want that dry pork that everyone picks out because it's disgusting. Yes, the orange one. How many spring rolls, serving of spring rolls, do you get? Let's say that they come in threes. You get loose. I mean, how many are you catering for? Okay, just a, just a, a family of five. 
Okay. Oh, family of five, but there's three per serve. That's tricky. You've got to get at least two serves. Oh, no. You, way, you, everybody... I, I would go, I would just throw caution to the wind and get about four serves. But you're going like to get a Santa sack of prawn crackers. Yeah, and aren't you going to get some <laughs> yes. prawn toast as well? Well, I mean, you'd have to. I, I would like kick things toast. off, I know, and, and you guys know my background, but um, chicken and sweet corn soup is definitely on the radar for me oh, if so I've had a big win. you never do the soup. Really? That's but how we again, go. So here we are, right? So we're like dissing, you know, we're dissing the, the fish and chips. Yes. But yet, I could see nothing better than celebrating a lotto win with, like, my weight in dim sims. Fried dim sims. Because you know why? Then I don't have to worry about what it's going to do to my body because the week afterwards I can hire a personal trainer to come mm. while I'm sleeping mm. and personally train me. Oh, I don't think you know uh, what think personal trainers do. No, it's fine. <laughs> I've already got it. It'll be weekend at Bernie style. I wouldn't even know what's happening. And the next morning I'll wake up and go, oh, I feel a bit sore. Oh, like, oh you ran a, you ran a marathon my, last night. my amazing rig? <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. What Nathan. a celebration. Keep dreaming. Um, I, I, I'm really happy that I don't know them, though, because anything, uh, an amount like this, I don't want to know you personally. Because oh, the resentment Because I high. couldn't live on this earth knowing that somebody I knew and watching how their life changes yeah. in an instant. It's a good thing for the grandchildren and possibly the children because he's an older man, but um, wouldn't you rather win it when you're younger? I know, I know what you're it. saying, but no. I mean, I don't think you're going to knock it if you do win it when no, you're young. No, no, that's a good point. If but <laughs> <grandparents> win <laughs> it when you're young. If grandparents win like $40 million, do you reckon they look at the younger generation of their family a little bit weirder now? Like, you know, like, you're, yeah. coming, you're coming for me? Yeah, you, I, you would contemplate, if you don't have the best relationship, you'd contemplate murdering them. Oh, yeah, and the, <laughs> you immediately go to your lawyer and write a cast yeah. iron will. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. like, some people hang on for years. Yes. Like, yeah, for yeah. years. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, well, no, I, I would like it now. So no, like now we we'll start. You definitely buy a house, buy, put, buy a new house for yourself with no stairs, <laughs> for sure. Oh, not because you can't get down. up them, because you don't want them to push you down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Buy some flowers. We can, you know, Sean. That's a bit embarrassing, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I went through. Oh, this from mother. I went through a phase where I, I, I bought a vase and I bought flowers from my house. And I, I have like, flowers in the house all the I time. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh, okay. All the time. Two. What's oh, the proof that you don't kill things completely? One in, well, one in the hallway and one do in you? the in well, the So what do you go to the, like? Do you go like on the movies to the flower market with the basket? No, I go to Fresh Provisions when I'm picking up, like, pick up chicken for the dog. Yeah. I get they sell flowers as well. Yeah, what do you go with? What do you go there then? I go with normally some Asiatic lilies. Yeah, lilies. Yeah. And uh, and then another little arranged bunch that had some the the, uh, the recent one had some big sort of the big pom pom chrysanthemums. Oh no, those ones. Thanks yeah. for asking. And some gerber and some foliage. Sorry, since foliage. I made my statement, Harry hasn't stopped laughing. Harry, so, you live in a share house? Well, you can't buy yourself flowers. Well, you well, can. You can. Yes. Just no, you about it. You can hold your own hand too, mate. You may as well buy yourself a Valentine's Day present. I can write my name in the stand. I can do anything. Exactly. <laughs> have you and your... Have you seen my diamonds? <laughs> have you and your housemates ever bought flowers for the house? Uh, no, but my housemate bought his girlfriend flowers for Valentine's Day and they're, st- they're still in the kitchen. They've wilted away almost to dust. By Sounds now. like... <laughs> he rejected them. That's what that yeah, sounds no, well, like. she just she she's just hanging around there and kept right. them there. Yeah, it's a nice touch. Oh, that's cool. Never get rid of them, obviously. No, no yeah. way. Yeah. Anyway, Until every, every you. young man that's living by himself should buy themselves some house flowers. <laughs> <laughs> to make Nathan he feel really better for no other reason. Again, you know? Can I just say, right, so if you're a single man, right, single straight man, okay, that's mm-hmm. living alone and, and you've got flowers. Natalie, if you were to come into his house and he has flowers, would you think straight away he's cheating on his girlfriend because there must be a woman there? Or do you just think that they're just some man flowers? Um, I wouldn't think too much into it. I, I mean, get over there's not a big difference between flowers no. and a pot plants. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm cheating. Cheating? <laughs> cheating. <laughs> cheating. Get out because of man fla- no, get out. Because man flowers don't exist. Oh, they oh, don't. Maybe, maybe there, a loved one recently died. I I, if there is a, if there is any single guys out there, right, that are living by themselves or in a share house with men, um, uh, if straight you, men, if, if straight men, if you buy flowers for the house, give us a call on thirteen twenty four ten. I want to see if this happens, or if it's just a giant no, gay no, thing. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a podcast of Nathan, Nat, and Sean. And I can push one. First class and 50k. 50k. We're all about the Eds today, um, in honour of Ed Sheeran, probably. Yeah. I don't know. He's I'm sure he's pulled through. Ed go around at the moment. You know who we did miss? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Oh my God. Eddie Vedder. Mm. Eddie Vedder. And Sean. Yes. Edward Herman. Edward Herman. The Hermans. No, no. he's from. Um, the Hermans are the. 
No, that's not. Yeah. No, no. If you're thinking about the monsters, yes. No, Ed, Edward Herman, otherwise known as Richard Gilmore. <laughs> Oh my god, that is a low point. <laughs> From the Gilmore Girls. Gil Gil Gil. So he plays Lorelei's dad. <laughs> hey, show some respect. He's dead now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. God bless. Um, oh, we've got a couple of uh, Ed, Edward, Eddie, sorry. Ed. One's Edward. We're, after, we're Ed. just after Ed. 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 Whatever Ed you are. In Nolamara, who do we have? Edwina. 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 Gosh, you know what? It's a special day when you come across an Edwina. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Isn't oh, it? that's nice. Yeah. yeah, that's not a lot of you around. You're Edwina. a bit unusual. No, not really. Was that Jennifer Sauna's <laughs> name in um, Absolutely Fabulous? Eddie, yeah, Eddie. Eddie, Edwina? Yeah. Yes, yes. And go. Edwina Bartholomew as Sean alluded Edwina to. Edwina Bartholomew. Yes, that's right. Edwina Bartholomew, yeah. yeah. Were you named oh. after would you, would you, a certain Edwina? Um, Mum, like, there's apparently there's some sort of, like, English, it's an all English name, so yes. she's so... Like really into it, and my dad's name Edward. So there oh, you go. Okay. Oh, right. that works out there perfectly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, good combination. And her mum's Edwina. Name's Wiener. Yeah. <laughs> Edwina. Yeah. If you were to win this amazing prize, where yeah. would you like to go? Anywhere in the world? Um, Italy, Rome. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. would. That'd be yeah. great. A lot of uh, flying to do to get there. Apparently, as well. Nat went to Italy. She I'm, never barely I talked never about it. Bring it up. She's never but spoken about it. But I did go so there I last know. year. I think that was been the a fourth guess. time I'd been to yeah. Italy. Yeah, yeah. I'd love you. In, I'd love you in Italy, Edwina. You'd be amazing mm. there. You're in the running, Edwina. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All right, let's let's pop down to Wembley. Hello, who's this? This is Eddie. 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 Are you a, is it short for Edward or Edwin or something? It is. I've only got my mum and my auntie that call me Edward. Edward, yeah. That's Is that when you're in trouble? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. You know what? <laughs> I like an Eddie. Mm. There's, there's a strong character well, in Eddie. I, feel like, never let you I down. feel like an Eddie's a bit of fun. Are you a bit of fun, Eddie? Uh, I try to be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, Eddie, where would you go, mate, with uh, uh, flying around the world first class? Where would you head? I'd be heading straight over to Europe, somewhere over there. Yeah. Oh, you could do yeah. all of Any, it. Anywhere in particular that yeah. takes your fancy or just want to get over there and get amongst it? Uh, planning on going to Italy next year, so oh. uh, same as the previous fall, I think. Yeah. You know Natalie went to Italy? Yeah. <laughs> just, no, that's wow. Yeah. All the Eds are going to Italy. <laughs> yeah. Italy. That's it. yeah. Yeah. We'll have an Ed, Ed conference over there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Good what stuff. a great time. All right, well, you're officially in the running, Eddie, so good luck, okay? <laughs> Thanks, guys. No all right. Good Don't you, miss your name being called out. Everybody can download the Nova Player and stream all day long. And there's a wild card hour. Oh, what time? It's between 10 and 11 a.m. today. Yeah. Ben will be taking all names. All names. So if you're an Eddie that missed out this time, he's just so happy with yourself, aren't you? Well, I was. Why, what, was that? what was the funny bit? Go oh, no, you had, you had to be there. I was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Crabfest, uh, Channel 7 Amanda Crabfest is back better than ever. It's this weekend, everybody. There's something for everybody, of course. And giving us a little bit of a um, preview of some of the food that's available, we have a special guest, Jason Hutchin from Red Manor and the Bridge Garden Bar at the Brighton Hotel. He spreads his time between both because... There's that much of him. Uh, Jason, <laughs> welcome. Jace, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So um, you, it's your day off. Thank yeah, you for coming in. Day, day off. So funny. Early morning. Yeah. Yes. And uh, came to Nova and decided to cook us some crabs, which is amazing. What have you got? Like, so there are so many meals here. The risotto I want to get stuck into. You've got um, uh, crab, crab cakes. cakes. Crab cakes, okay. Oh. Yeah. Thai style crab cakes. But talk to me about this big that plate. A, that's a chilli plum crab. Chili, chili plum crab. It's, it's going to be delicious. Pl- uh, crab's plums. Sean. Last time Sean ate chili crab, he had to pay $300 in Singapore. So, <laughs> uh, it was market price and Sean didn't think didn't of asked what ask. it is. <laughs> Only because he's got so much money. He's, he's yeah, oh, I had to borrow it off Nathan. Anything. He just and, gave me gold bullion. It was and hilarious. there's also this <laughs> <laughs> Got it from the prawn, mitt, though. So it was a sambuca prawns. Sambuca prawns. Sambuca prawns. When's okay. the last time you had a shot of sambuca? I was at university oh, and it was a bad decision. This would be nice. Come down to the stand on Saturday. You can have a shot with me. I was saying to you, um, uh, Red Man has been around. You told me for 18 years you've had this business. 18 years. So when my kids were young, we used to go there uh, when we were visiting our in-laws for sure, and it was your place is always spot on, mate. So 18 years and you're still going strong. Yes, I'm still going strong. 
The sandbooker prawns are the classic dish that's been on the menu ever since we've been there as well. Oh, really? Is that right? So you can buy the sandbooker prawns and the chilli plum crabs at the stand on the foreshore on the weekend. Oh, brilliant. What um, sandbooker is it? Is it the white or the black? White. Oh, yeah, I'm white sandbooker. What about a black sandbooker? Would that work? I'll make it go black. <laughs> well, there you go. Not, <laughs> not, not quite as pretty You don't to just get at. entertained here, do you? You learn. You learn things. So, there you go. That's pretty bit of fun, isn't it? <laughs> that is brilliant. So, how many crab fests do you reckon you've worked at over the years? Um, hasn't been on for the last three years, so probably 15. Yeah, around. right. Do you always have crabs? No, not always. Oh. <laughs> Every now and then, I'm just thinking, like, are they so they're not always in your fridge? Not, oh no, we do. We always have crabs all year round. So you always have crabs. The Redmen are specialised in seafood, so we do a lot of crayfish. No, and you personally? Crabs. No, no. So you always have crabs? No, not personally. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe wanted to get a headline there. You'll find that on the front page of the West Australian tomorrow. Well, I just had a little nibble of the crab cakes. Delicious, so fresh and lovely. I want to try some of the risotto. It's <laughs> 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 so yummy. Beautiful. Yeah, no. It's Try a cool. crab cake. I don't eat crab usually, so this is bloody good. Oh, oh so man. much flavour. Oh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's a crab cake. Mm. Oh, yum. Unreal, Jason. Stick your finger in that sauce, Sean. Oh, sauce. <laughs> yeah. Stick your finger in that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like? Yeah, that's delicious. That's a chill fun fresh. thing. Yeah. All right, everyone get down to Crab Fest. Go and see yeah, Jason. It's going to be massive. There's um, heaps of stuff going on. A live musical weekend. Pop icon Vanessa Amorosi is going to be um What was her song again? Sunday night. And absolutely everybody. 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 That's the one. <laughs> hey, Jace, just quickly, um, is everybody excited? Being back uh, at Crab Fest for the first time in three oh, years. Oh, de- definitely. The, the city's pumped. There's going to yeah. be a huge weekend. Food Good degrees. weather. Hasn't been on for three years. Everyone will get down there. Free event. Yeah. yeah. Remember, remember the last it's time it was cancelled literally a day or yeah. a day before? Because yeah. of those yeah, COVID breaking. restrictions. So they, they so jinxed you, me because the last so time I come here was... Yeah, that, that that was time. So, so what did you do, just quickly, what did you do with all the stuff that you had for that weekend? Look, everyone sort of struggled that weekend, but the community support was amazing. We sold for Watsies and the local crabbers. We probably sold over a ton of crabs just through the Bridge Garden Bar that weekend. Oh, really? Wow. Right. So everyone was lined up and all just to support the... Um, the community, which is good. Yeah, awesome. yes, brilliant. That's Huge. awesome, isn't it? Well, have a cracking weekend. It's, I know it's a big one. I thank know you much. feel like a day off by the end of it. And thank you so much for coming in on oh, your thank day you. off. That's so a good. great Jason. sacrifice. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We just had a bit of a crab feeding frenzy. Nathan's <laughs> just literally shoveling food into <laughs> his mouth. Those crab cakes, I don't eat crabs. Those, those crab cakes are yes. unbelievable. Yes, don't speak with your mouth full. <laughs> <laughs> so last night, as we know, there was a record set at Optus Stadium. Yes. Uh, Ed Sheeran was absolutely pumping. 75,000 people, as you, as we expect, because we've seen him before. Yeah, we know how good he is. Us three, we've yeah, seen yeah. him before. He's so um, good. He, he is wonderful. So it was really good to go along. I, uh, You know, there's a couple of things you learn, and Nate, you brought up one this morning. So Ed uh, wrote a song that he had is just in a pile of maybe songs. Yes. Yeah. And um, then Justin Bieber was... A person who Ed then said, Do you yeah, just gave it to him. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, yep. I'm not doing it. That mm. song was Love Yourself, mm. which everyone thought was written about Selena Gomez. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so that was like Ed's, like, oh, no, I'm not going to use this. Yeah, now reject Ed's like, pile. Oh, no. Maybe I should get that one. <laughs> <laughs> not that he's short of a good song or no. money. Oh, yeah, he's got so many, yeah. so many. Um, so he mentioned that one. The other one that uh, we play a lot is um, Celestial. Yes. Well, I think it's coming up later on. He. He was in Japan, and the pe- uh, people from Pokemon said to him, do you want to come to the Pokemon place where we make everything? Mm. And then when he came there and met everybody, they said, can you write us a song for Pokemon? As Celestial. is about Pokemon. Yes. Who mean? doesn't say you've got to catch them all once. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he wrote the song. He said, what does Pokemon sound like? And then this is what it was. This? This is what he came up with. How interesting. Isn't that interesting? Sorry. This. This song. For Pokemon. For Pokemon. Or Pokemon. Or Pokemon. I, I don't mean to say it, tell her that he doesn't know. No, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's got nothing to do with Pokemon. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Pokemon. 
<laughs> this is what he wrote. Do you reckon he tells? Pikachu. Do you reckon he tells the audience a different story every time to see if they'll believe yeah, it? Oh, I'll tell you what. I, I bought it. Seventy-five thousand bought it. I don't believe him. But the one thing is, we were in um, a lot of us staff from Nova were able to get right close to the stage. In fact, I reckon I was five seats from the front of the stage. Wow, wow. amazing. When, when we got there. I uh, saw a few people I knew, so I went up and had a chat right on the stage where Ed was, the big, um, the yeah, big so front arena. front row. Front, absolutely front row. And then I walked back and I said to uh, the missus, did you want to just go up there and we'll hang there? And yeah. she said, oh, no, we'll wait till the music gets underway. We'll sit around where we are and then we'll go. Nothing was said to me then, but when I did try to go to the front, I was stopped by Australia's youngest security guard. <laughs> and um, this guy was like, uh, oh, sorry, you can't, you can't go there. And I said, oh, yeah, I've got two different yes. colour bands on, a red one and a gold one. I, I was just in there a second ago. He goes, mm. no, no, let me have a look at your seat. So I got, I, um, got up my phone and showed showed him my seat. Yep. And mine said, you know, A5, I think it was, and unless you were A4 or 321, yeah. yes. then you couldn't go past the this barrier that he'd set. Yeah, okay. So, so he was he the gatekeeper. He, he was, the, yeah, it was set. Well, well it was no, set he was him. maintaining. But he was that the gate. gatekeeper. Yes. But, but you know, given the fact that he was so young, you would think that you'd just be able to. So, walk how old are we talking? Bathroom. Well, my I got a fifteen-year-old son, and I thought to myself, he can't be older than thirteen. Maybe he's fourteen. Yeah, but the child so, labour laws, of course, yes, it means is. he would have just been a young-looking fifteen-year-old, 15 year old, probably. Yeah, yeah. He, he well, yeah, he must have been. But um, anyway, so as the night was going past, that people are trying to rush in there from yes. the area where I was. A lot of women, a um, lot of guys that I saw just trying to get through just mm. to the front, yeah. and they only had to get you know a meter or so, and they'll pass this guy, but no one could. You know why? No one could get past him to respect his authority. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking up to people and saying, "You yeah. can't be here," and taking them out. He was doing it, and to the shock and horror of probably a lot of people, that they were getting told by this youngster. <laughs> That they couldn't be in there. I've, once he went to go to the toilet uh, because he got uh, a lady came up and said, "Hey, you can go and have a toilet yeah, break." And she was standing there. As soon as she stood there, it was like Everybody. a rush of five <laughs> or six ladies. They just burnt straight through, and they just got you know up what? right or close to the stage, having a ball. But I when he got for, back, I would love for him to have returned with his fifteen-year-old SWAT team yes. <laughs> to go in there behind enemy lines and bring them all back out. Uh, Do you reckon he's at school today? Just going to be going? Oh, you should have seen all the people I told to sit down last night. I reckon I, the authority was right there. Yeah. With him, that and he, um, when he came back to his position again, yeah. he wouldn't let any. I was Hard literally line. standing half a body length from him. He would never. I mean, he hi that kid. He's I amazing. You, when I was in Kalgoorlie working at the Surf Shack, uh, I was in charge of people way older than me, and it was a real hard pill for some of them to swallow. Yes, because, of course. Like, I mean, you know, I think I was in year ten, and I was like <laughs> yes. some of, some of the people that, that would answer to me were in year twelve, um, and that didn't sit well with them, especially the ones that weren't even at school as well, because mm. uh, so that was their. Career. <laughs> well, you know what? If you can sell surf clothes in Kalgoorlie and surf boards <laughs> to people... a great point. And do a surf report. And i tell you right now, thank you very much, on 6KG during Rick D's weekly top 40. Uh, kids in power. I'm glad people respected his authority. Well, they didn't have well, a choice. Well, they didn't have a choice. Think. He was wielding it so hard. Yeah. All right. We Good on him. Let's talk about kids in power, 13, 24, 10. So a kid has a lot of power in a position, whether it be work or Especially maybe Especially if they're telling or... adults what to do. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah, yeah. and you might have been one like Nathan was yeah. at the surf show. But yeah, you raise a good point, Nathan, because sport, sometimes there are yeah. quite young kids umpiring mm. sport, oh, yeah, telling yeah. adults what to do, and they don't like it very much. I know, and I thought of that sports reference. Yeah, I know, insane. how about you? Yeah, sport, it's great. Play it. <laughs> um, we're going to give somebody 300 bucks cash. All right. Oh, what? I know. Uh, plus, you're in the draw to win the ultimate Crab Fest weekend package. Oh, I thought you'd just gone into Sean's wallet. No, this is amazing. You get a couple of nights you know um, accommodation at the Siebel. You get tickets to the soiree by the bay on Friday night. Lovely. You get tickets to a cocktail masterclass, VIP party entry, everything. Okay. Play Head on. down to the Channel 7 Magic Crab Fest this weekend. All the details are at crabfest.com.au. All right, we are talking about kids in power. Megan's in Beldivis. Hi, Megan. Hello, how are you? Hi, Megan. All right, what happened? So, when I was growing up, my parents owned a convenience store mm. and they started me working there at, like, age nine. <laughs> um, obviously, they didn't really care about child labour laws and I used to stand on a milk crate to be able to serve over the counter. Oh, yes. um, Sweet I know. <laughs> so, by the time I was, like, 15, I was working quite a few hours per week, around 25 and going to school. Um, but I was in charge of helping with the hiring and firing. So, <laughs> People would come in for interviews and they would expect to see, like, someone like my dad 
But really, there'd be these 15 year olds saying, okay, take a seat, welcome, like asking all these questions. Yeah. Now, first up, what do you think about the Powerpuff Girls? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like, can you drive me home after we finish our show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> important stuff. So they didn't take that all well, Megan. It would have been stuff. awkward for them, I guess, when they sit down and see. You would think, is this a joke? Yeah, I think so. Um, but then I, once they realised it was like a family run business, then yeah. they were sort of able to. Get yeah, the gist to... of what was mm. going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it was hard because obviously it's hard to gain people's respect when you're only that age. Yes. Um <laughs> but but obviously like yeah, just it works and yeah, it was really good. Did you ever have to interview somebody that you went to school with? Oh no, because it was a family business, we'll kinda of lax on that. So if there was someone that was wanting a job my and we knew them, my dad was just sort of like, Yeah, just that'll do. Them. Kind okay. of oh, fair enough. <laughs> Megan, when I when I was in high school and I had the job at the um surf shop one night, um well, cause the, the uh, my actual boss was away, so the security company had my number to call uh-huh. in case there was something happening anyway. <laughs> someone had um ripped a hole in the back um wall and um and <gasps> were flogging stuff, so they end up ringing me as like a kid in I uh, know oh, it was probably like year eight or something like that. They rang me. I had to go there and sleep in the shop That's with right. a knife. <laughs> that seems to legit. protect mm. the stock. The billabong you trousers. You didn't care about billabong shirts that much, surely. Mm. Natalie, uh, Natalie, thank you, Megan. I don't know how much I care about <laughs> billabong shirts, to be honest. Ben's in Scarborough. Morning, Ben. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, hey Benny. Benny. Talk to us about a kid with some yeah, power. Yeah, so when I was I was an apprentice mechanic and sort of coming into the end of my apprenticeship, they put me on as workshop foreman. Oh, uh, foreman! So <laughs> I was I was actually an apprentice at the time, and then they were training me onto it. And then as soon as I finished my apprenticeship, I was the workshop foreman. And um, there's a couple of older blokes that were there, and I tell you what, they uh, they weren't they weren't too happy about it. I was, what, 17, 18 years old, and, um, yeah, they, they definitely were not happy about that that idea. Oh, no, man. And I bet they'd been there I'm forever sorry. as well. How good is uh, yeah, that for the, your CV? I've been there for 30-plus yeah. years, I think. Yeah. yeah, and they put you in as their boss. Well, I love that because they look at they look at the experience he goes he's got, and they said one day people will die under his supervision. So <laughs> Ben's the way to go. Ben, oh. that's impressive, actually. Yeah, very impressive. You, you must have been awesome. Good on you, Ben. Uh, Rachel, hello. Good morning, guys. How are we? Good, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Who's the kid with power? Um, that would be my daughter, actually. Mm-hmm. She's um, she's 14 years old and she's a netball umpire. Um, so this year, Amanda Netball decided to do uh, spring carnival walking netball for you know for anyone who wanted to do it. So there's a lot of older women, obviously, with injuries and stuff like that that we've all wanted to get back into netball. So we thought, yeah, let's do this. And mid-40s, I suppose, we're playing against another team of ladies who were serious about it. I mean, they yes. really, really wanted to win this walking netball. And Sash was umpiring them. And so what happened was, they, you know, they didn't like very many of her calls. They were rolling eyes. Uh, Sash ended up giving one of the ladies a caution yes. and said, you know, that she'll be taken off if she continues with her rolling eyes and yes, kind yeah. of not listening to the umpire. And then she ended up putting in a written warning in the end um, to, the, to the main office because their attitude stunk so bad. So, and there yeah, were women in their power. 40s playing yes, social netball. Yep. But not even social netball, it was walking netball. So, I mean... <laughs> walking netball? Walking netball. Oh, walking well, yeah, netball? you're so old, you're not getting out yeah, of Yeah, that's right. Is that like... What, what, why walking? What do you mean? Because they're, they're so ancient. They're, ancient. they're in their forties. <laughs> they're in their forties. <laughs> yeah, basically, you've got old injuries, but you still really want to get out there and compete. Yeah. But you just you can't run anymore. So the idea is, is that you can walk. So yeah, it is good fun day. So like, in, in their forties. In their forties. <laughs> so I can't get past it. Oh, this to me is an eighty-year-old thing. Like, you're saying <laughs> in your forties. That's unbelievable. Yeah, isn't it? Thank you. Thanks, Rach. Absolutely, all good stories. Thank you, guys. Um, we have the three hundred dollars uh, cash, by the way, and you'll be put into the draw to win the ultimate crab fest weekend package. Head down to the Channel Seven Mandra C- Crab Fest this weekend. All the details at crabfest.com.au. Megan kicked us off as uh, a nine-year-old. She was working at the yeah. convenience In, store during the hiring and firing at fifteen. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. work. Well done. Hire a nine-year-old today. <laughs> They're really cheap. Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Podcast. There's a movie in cinemas now called Shackleton, The Greatest Story of Survival, and the man who made it is Tim Jarvis, and we caught up with him. 
Tim, I usually don't like watching things where I learn. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to say, I did not know anything about the 1913 expedition with Sir Ern- Ernest Sh- Shackle- um, Shackleton. Shackleton. That is unbelievable. Yes. So... Like, it is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So twenty-seven men, right? And in the like, most horrendous Arctic, uh, Antarctic um, conditions. Yeah, their boats been smashed to pieces, pieces, essentially. But the thing that blows me away, Tim, is that no one perished. Yeah. Look, it's incredible. Look, I think that's why it's such a story for our time. You know, the fact that in in these modern times, when people tend to kind of look out for themselves, that here's a guy who looked out for everyone else ahead of himself. You know, and that's what makes it kind of so so interesting, so relevant, you know. Oh, so, yeah. so when you're tracking, you know, you, you go along and, and you uh, track, recreate. Recreate. Yep. Were you trying to get rid of a few people <laughs> on the way? <laughs> going, Let's see how good my leadership skills Cause, are. Cause the conditions haven't improved. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Look, I tell you what. There's plenty of people I wouldn't mind leaving on Elephant Island, but we actually didn't. We didn't think a perfectly good ship and leave anybody yeah. down there. Um, we just just got five sort of crazy guys with me in the in the small boat. Did the Yep, did that bit of the journey. Yeah, the and, but your yeah. boat's better than they, their yes. boats. That's the thing. Well, well, it's still you, not exactly no, massive, it's is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. It's, yeah. the, same. it's, it's the, the same. same. It was exactly the same boat, really. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Look, I mean, look, all of those oh, boats. That like wooden surf, one. Surf, I got you. Surf boats know. that we rate in this country, you know, surf boats are basically based on the old ship to shore Royal Navy lifeboats. They're yep. all the same, twenty-three foot, six and a half meter long, keelless rowboats, really, and so. Yeah, it wasn't difficult to rebuild something so basic. Key thing was keeping it afloat. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the obvious question to all of this is, why on earth would you want to recreate it? Why would you want to put yourself through this, knowing that you know a hundred just because a hundred years somebody did the hundred years ago somebody did the same thing? Why would you do it? Well, look, I mean, like, I mean, the the, the uh, climber Mallory, who famously climbed down at Everest and died up there, yeah. was asked, "Why why do you want to do it?" He said, "Because it's there," you know. And I guess yes. there's a yeah. kind of element of that, but it sounds a bit weak, I know. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> for me. For me, it's always been about the adventure. So, you know, life, look, we're all looking for a bit more understanding about what life's all about and our place in it. And for some of us, that pushes us to want to do this kind of stuff. And to me, I regard not doing it would be a bigger kind of crime than, you know, <laughs> taking a few risks. So sure. I, I enjoy doing it. And, um, you know, Shackleton's granddaughter asked me to do this trip. And it was like a rhetorical question. In other words, she said, you know, will you? She meant you will. Yes, yes. Minimal. And then the die was cast, and you know, and as soon as you tell people, you are uh, you're on the journey, you know. Now, um, the parts that really got me as well was when they had to basically live on the ice, mm. right? So for months on end, yes, and not knowing if it's yeah. going to break beneath them, and but that was their home. And then having to worry about food sources, which was let's try and find penguins and seals. Now you're talking about recreating it. How does a penguin taste? Because I don't think it's going to taste like KFC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, yeah. Well, look. Um, uh, no, no animals were harmed in the, in the making of this film. Not even a nibble on a Yeah, you had all your own perishables. Not even a nibble on a happy foot. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Plus, you get stuck between your teeth, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, look, we, um, look, they had 10 months on the ship, then five months on the ice, then paddled for five days to get to an island, and then, of course, they did the crazy sort of open boat journey across the ocean just mm. to get to the island oh, where that people was were, you know, so... You know, by the time they'd done all that, they'd been out there for 20 months oh. and they'd expected to die for a lot of that yeah. time. Whereas, you know, having done what we did, I'd never like to say we did all that Shackleton did because mm. we did kind of the last, okay, the most probably most dangerous bit. But, you know, you come back with just a whole new level of respect for these these people for what they managed to... I'm amazed. Yeah. Tim, have you, know. you spent much time down there before? Obviously, you would have done a bit of a, a scope, I'd imagine. <laughs> Yeah, look, I've actually been 13 times to Antarctica. Wow. But, um, before that trip, I'd been, you know, five or six times. I'd done stuff in the modern modern way, you know, Gore-Tex jackets, GPS. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plastic boots, cheating, you know, the soft way. The, the soft, soft way. way. I'm all up and, for the soft um, way, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mars bars and things like that. And, and look, I just, it, it, it's a bit like turning the clock back and, you know, facing Jardine in the Bodyline series. You know, how are you going to yeah. fare? You know, it's yeah. interesting yeah. to see. How would you match as a modern person trying to do something the way they used to do it back in the old days? And so it was always a, always a kind of a, um, a thing to see how how you know whether you could live up to what Mawson and Shackleton had managed to achieve all those years ago. And so um, 
And so we went and did it, you know, just to prove yeah. that modern people have still got the stomach for this sort of thing. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by Shackleton as a person. You know, obviously there was a race to be the first to the South Pole. That was going on, you know, he wasn't the only one attempting it at the time. But what, what got me, obviously he was going off on a lot of long expeditions and stuff. And when he eventually died of a heart attack, at, it was at South Georgia Island. His wife just said, oh, yeah, bury him there. She was done. She was sick of it. She's like, don't bring him home. <laughs> bury him there. Yeah, that's right. He loves yeah. it so much. Bury him there. <laughs> That's right, you know, uh, that's exactly right. I mean, you, you couldn't have written the script because, of course, he did the trip that I recreated and, and then, you know, got back to civilization, saved everyone. Six years later, goes back and dies back at the scene of his greatest victory, yeah. you know. And it just seemed, you know, he said, I'm not feeling very well. And then they found him having suffered a massive heart attack during the night. And then looked to bring him back to civilization. The wife said, you know, I think actually. <laughs> Take him, back, take him back to the spiritual home, so back <laughs> yeah. down anyway. Yeah. And you know, he's, his is the only grave. Everyone else is a whaler who used to work at the old whaling station down there. And his is the only grave that points south to his spiritual home. Oh, is that home. right? Oh, there you go. It's oh, very powerful stuff. Yeah, it's very yeah. powerful stuff. Hey, Tim, um, off the movie just for a second. When you've been down to Antarctica, have you had any really uh, close calls with any of the, the, the animals down there that have wanted to... <laughs> Take like you a, apart, a seal or, is or a it penguin? Just the cold. <laughs> yeah, mauled by a penguin. Yeah. No, look, I mean, I, look, I've seen killer whales. I've been out in the boat. We, we, we've had humpbacks coming up, brushing up alongside the, the boat. But I mean, you don't get anything like you get the polar bears up north, yeah, where no. I've been five times, and I was stalked by a bear for Were you? several weeks. And it's kind of an interesting feeling to realise you're not at the top of the food chain, and that something is just in its own territory. Wow. Just keeping an eye on you and thinking when might be an appropriate time to kind of oh. attack. Um, so that's an interesting feeling. But, you know, it's their their territory, right? It's not ours. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, you, well, sort of, you sort of understand it. You don't appreciate it at the time, but yeah, you understand it. Yeah, you understand it. Okay. I think I know the answer to this, but um, you've been to obviously buildings that are in Antarctica. Um, does any of them have air conditioning? <laughs> yeah, you know what? They're all like shipping with the US base at the South Pole where I went back in 99. They, everybody lives in a sort of like a shipping container, a refrigerated shipping yep. container, except they, they turn it around so it's all heated. So you are in the warmth of the okay. shipping container and outside is minus 50. So it's like reverse cycle. Reverse yeah. cycle. But so, so it would have reverse an aircon cycle. feature. Yeah. You wouldn't put it on. Yeah, aircon cases. is the big issue. Yeah, 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 yeah you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't put it on below for 24. No. You wouldn't need that. No. no, you don't stick it on 24, no. <laughs> but I mean, if it was on 17, that's still going to feel like a hot summer's day, isn't it? I feel feel really warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just relative. Oh, Tim. oh, I'm going to get Ford and Dune. What's, ne- what's the next adventure, Tim? Yeah, where do you go from there? Oh, well, look, I'm, look, I'm actually climbing all the mountains of the equator. They've got a remnant glacier left, and there are amazing. There are 25 mountains of the equator that have got glaciers, and it's always amazing to see ice at uh, you know the equator in Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya and in Colombia and in Ecuador. Papua, you know, it's, it's amazing to see it. And, and it's just a good way of showing the climate piece. And yep. there's some wonderful mountains in there. Some are, some, are, some you wouldn't want to fall off. They're pretty pretty technical. Yep. And then others are, you can take other people for the journey. So up. that's a very yeah. exciting. Exactly. The, the, the glacier yeah. thing was very um, alarming yes. in, in this, seeing how they've changed how and changed, stuff like yeah. that. I wonder what we're going to find as they melt. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Do, how, how, Ooh, reckon, do, yes, how long do you reckon we've got before, you know, that we should absolutely go and visit Antarctica? Uh, and not wait too long. What do you reckon? Well, uh, look, it really depends. Look, the thing is, it's twice the size of Australia, right? Yes. So it's big, and it's and the, the ice. The average thickness of ice is two thousand and fifty meters. And I remember I was I was having a meeting on the top floor of one of those big buildings on on Hay Street, in yeah. downtown Perth, and it was sort of I was on the top floor, as in Rio Tinto or something, and it was thirty six stories, and we were one hundred and sixty two meters up. And I said to the people there, you know what, the average thickness of ice on Antarctica, the average. 14 times the height of this. Yeah, oh, so we've got a while. Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. Got good, good. Yeah. It's <laughs> good to know. 5 Ks. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as all the awesome. as long as all the buildings in Antarctica keep their air con on, yeah, that's right. We're going to be fine. We're okay. going to be fine. All right. Thanks so much for talking <laughs> to us, Tim. People can check out Shackleton: The Greatest Story of Survival. It's in cinemas now. Thank you so much for talking to us. Hey, great talking to you, Nathan, Nat, and Sean in podcast form. We all know these three have no filter, but for-
for water with consistent results, visit Complete Home Filtration. Taste, feel, see the difference with 20% off for the month of March. Look, we've been working together for 20 years and I think it's safe to say we've reached the pinnacle. We are going to pour water for money. That's right, for <laughs> $1,000 worth of money. Yeah. You need to be listening carefully, though. If it spills over the top, you are out. Justine got... from Canning Vale is up first. Good morning, Justine. Good morning. Hi, Justine. Mm. Justine, Hi. this is big because um, you're playing against Chris from Wanneroo and Shannon from Belladura, right? So mm. it's really a battle okay. of how well you can hear and, and how of... risky you're going to be. Yeah, it's a battle of nerves, I think. All yeah. right. Mm. So we've got a, um, a glass um, of unknown height. <laughs> I mean, we know the height. I know the height. We're not going to tell you. I just measured it. So there are there are three glasses identical. Yep. So the, so yep. there's no difference. Yep. Nathan is going to be pouring all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're up first and he's going to pour water yep. into the glass. It's your job to tell him when to stop. The oh. idea is to get as close to yep. the top as possible. If you get over, you're out. Yeah, cannot overflow. Okay, you ready? Yep. <laughs> all right, Justine. Nathan is going to the pouratorium. Right. Can we have complete ASMR? Conditions, mm. thank you. Stop. Good pull. Stop. Good okay. pull. Pretty right. strong pull there. Justine, you hang there. We move on to yep. Chris from Waterroo. Good morning, Chris. Chris? Behind the pot plan now. Chris, Chris, are you there, mate? Yes, hello. Oh, hello, hello, Chris. Chris. Hi, hey, Chris. All you right. know the sound of pouring water, Chris. Yes, I just heard it. Okay, okay. Chris. Okay. Now, well, you have job. to get a higher level than Justine without going over, all right? Okay. Okay, you ready? Yep. You could tell me when to stop very loudly. Stop. Stop. Oh, no, Chris. No, stop. No, stop stopped. screaming at me. <laughs> 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 no, that was good stopping. It was right, the most aggressive so game we've ever played. All right, you hang there, Chris. Uh, we have one more glass of water to pour. Shannon, hello. Hello, how are you? Nice hello, Shannon. Shannon. Okay, right, Shannon, Shannon, Nathan, same deal. The glass is the same size. Yes, everyone, we are doing this. The water... <laughs> For a thousand dollars, it's the same consistency. It is. Nathan it's blue in is colour. the same pourer. I am, and you are pouring it from the same height every time, Nathan. Thank you, Sean. Okay, oh. Nathan. All right, Shannon. <laughs> Begin pouring. Y'all stop. Stop. Ooh, okay, okay. All right, guys. Okay. All right. Now it's time for results. Okay. So rule one out first, Nathan. Okay. So the one I'm going to rule out first, coming in at, <laughs> oh, coming in at. What are you measuring? How far from the top? No, from from the bottom. So how much is in there? Nine centimeters mm. in a thirteen centimeter tall glass. Mm-hmm. So four centimeters from the top, you might yes. say. Yes, that person is Chris from Wanneroo. Oh, Sorry, Chris, you're out. out. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Thank Sorry, Chris. you, Justine and Shannon. Yeah, Righto, right. Nathan, thousand dollars thanks to complete home filtration. Oh, Jeez, it's tense. It's tense. Oh, Stuff in the clinches, oh. they say. All right, okay. Nathan, <laughs> wield your ruler, Nathan. Justine, how did you think you went? Uh, not too bad. You weren't pouring, so it was good. Oh, <laughs> oh pledge in there too. That was a cheap one. Now, I wasn't ready for that, Justine. <laughs> this is you. like the old-fashioned when you were kids and somebody, like your mum poured out the cordial yep. and you yeah. you looked at the level. more than you. Yeah, right. exactly. Shall we, shall we start with Justine? <laughs> yeah. Mm. So what did 13 Justine centimetre high. All right. Justine, you have... 10.3 centimetres worth of liquid in your 13-centimetre glass. Let's go over to mm. Shannon. 10.3. Shannon has to have 10.4 or more. Shannon, how Shannon. did you feel? Ooh. How did you feel about it when you heard the noise? <laughs> Oh, I didn't think I got it, but when you said it was a 13-centimetre tall glass, I thought a little bit more yeah. positive being my lucky number. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Shannon, 13-centimetre tall glass, you have... Yep. 9.9 9 centimetres, oh, which wind. means Justine! Oh. Justine! Oh. Just Four like mil. that, Justine, you've won $1,000 cash. All oh. thanks to complete home filtration. Have you ever been a part of a more compelling game, Justine? 
Oh, no, it was, it was yeah, it was it's nerve wracking. isn't it? it was, Tell your friends, Justine, <laughs> gather around the radio oh, tomorrow. Get it for the again. kids, everyone, for Christmas. Three glasses, <laughs> a jug, water. It's the new PS2. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to spice things up as we have, just get some um, cake dye, so the stuff, the food, food colouring. Food colouring. Um, from, I got that from Kitchen Warehouse, and it's terrific. It just really adds an element for the radio. Well done. Everybody <laughs> loves it. I mean, check you out can, our well, socials for all the of the That's action. The oh, yes. If you want to see someone pour oh. water into a glass, three. check out our socials. Three times, Nathan, not just once. <laughs> Blue three water. times. And then just as exciting as the yep. measuring afterwards. That's it's right, just... everyone. That's right, tomorrow. Another we're thousand be... bucks. Doing some more Richard Porras. Up for grabs. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I have to tell you, I was really worried about the welfare of Phoebe Stewart, mm. um, who is Bustleton's singing siren on Australian Idol. I'll tell you what, she can She's sing amazing. that girl. Her voice is next level. Yeah. There's some really good... I know. Performances at I know. The moment, she's at the point 15. Yeah. It's no amazing. One's watching it. Yeah. So um, last night uh, she was with her vocal coach yep. beforehand. They show a little package yes. before she sings her song, and uh, in that package she had an extra um, uh, an extra obstacle in her performance. You see. Phoebe's only started wearing high heels for this competition. Because she's a 15-year-old from Bustleton. She yeah. wouldn't... <laughs> it's not, oh, not required until yeah. now. No. Yeah. So uh, that's hard enough for her to be yes. on stage and moving around and standing there and, you know, like, mm. um, and, and not falling over. This week, she had the challenge of having to walk down a set of stairs while she was performing her song at the yeah, start. Yeah, so she was going to start at the top and yep. then walk down and then yep. really belt it out. And she was really worried about it. So in pre- rehearsals, well, you saw her nearly... Do. Go ass up. And um, there's no railing there. Yeah, and you don't, and because you don't want to look down no. either. You want to sort of look out to the audience. Yeah, and the camera, yeah. And you can tell she was crapping her dad. Yeah, I would be too. Yeah, so then uh, it uh, the package is over, and then it's the stage performance, mm. right? And then they've got a close up of Phoebe's face, and she looks like she is terrified. And I thought, why is she too terrified? And then they pull back. She's up on the platform ready to walk down the stairs. They've covered those entire stairs in smoke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. She's like walking in clouds. <laughs> she cannot. Like, in see. heels. To, and she has to walk down stairs she, that she can't see. Humble. And I just thought, how did she even do it? Gotta break her neck. neck. Yes. And then afterwards, Megan Trainer said something to her yes. like, you know, oh, my gosh, I can't believe there was smoke. And she goes, yeah, I know. And I, by the sounds of it, it wasn't in rehearsals. And what's the, what's <laughs> annoying about that is if there's smoke covering the stairs, she didn't need to wear heels anyway. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you can't right. see her feet. What's the point of that? <laughs> and it just, I think we should be talking about openly about how dangerous high heels yeah. can be. Well, we know like they, they're just generally bad for your feet. Yeah. But one of, I had an incident when I was at university where a friend of mine, Joanne, that's her name, um, she, we were, it was a party at, at Carlton Football Club, actually. Princess I Park, Natalie. Yeah, Princess Park. And she was wearing this pair of unbelievably high stilettos and at some point during the evening, a lot of alcohol was consumed. But she, I don't know, with all of her weight, stomped on my foot oh. and the heel, imagine mm. your foot, when you're looking at foot, yeah. it went between the two bones yeah. in, in sort of in the foot and I had a bruise there for about six weeks. It was agonised. It was like somebody had stabbed me. Yeah. And it was, I couldn't walk. I had to take my shoe off and then it swelled so much I couldn't get it back on again. So I'm like hobbling around on in one on one foot, foot because she was drunk and stood on me with her stiletto. I tell you what. Very oh, dangerous. You know the really, really sharp stilettos? Yeah, like that's the essentially really what this is. Yeah, because yeah. the, the, the surface yeah. area is so yeah. tiny and a lot yeah. of weight's going yeah. through it. When yeah. I was in Cairns, um, I was doing radio. Before I actually started here, I just like a little stint over there and then I rocked up to these people's houses because um, we were doing this thing where I have to rock around to their place and um, the guy came out and he had like a bandage thing on his back or like a patch, you know, what is it, gauze on his back. Oh, okay. So what had happened. He's... Um, his missus had asked him to go down to the shop and get her a cornetto and then when he came back the cornetto cone was broken and she was so infuriated she threw her high heel at him and stabbed him in the back. She seems and like a reasonable person. Out yeah. of his back. Oh God. And I myself have had danger in high heels. Um, the one Where's time I bought them, Sean, during the Curtin University we had a team in for the Gay Olympics. It was all the different, um, you know, learning establishments. Yep, yep. Teaching the uh, yeah, educational um, facilities were, were in it and I was in the um, high heel skip relay and I broke my toe. Skip relay. High heel skip. You're skipping over lawn in the high heels and then, using, a- and then using a, a hula hoop to skip through. Oh. And that combination... 
toe snapped. All right. You're lucky. I mean, that combination at the best of times. I, I, know, think I would have thought too, is a two. <laughs> we want to talk about a lot there. your in heels horror story. How dangerous can heels be? Give us a call, 13 24 10. We're going to give somebody $150 to spend at Autobahn Mechanical. Oh. I was going to say, too bad today, tonight's not around, because they could really pick this story. Are, really cool. <laughs> Are you a qualified mechanic looking for top rates and a sign-on bonus? Google Autobahn Mechanical now. Oh, yeah, get on board. How dangerous are heels exactly? Vicky's in Madeley. Hey, Vic. Hello, how are you going? Good, this Vic. is the public service announcement, letting people know exactly how <laughs> dangerous heels can be. What happened? So I am a high heel wearer. I will just get that out of the way now. I'm not one of these people who wears them every once in a while. I usually mm. wear them all the time. Okay. So for my 40th birthday, we were going to the Crown, to the Epicurean, and my husband bought me these amazing but very, very expensive shoes. Yes. So between the walk from the car park <laughs> to the Epicurean, yes. my feet were ripped to absolute oh. shreds by oh. these heels yep. to the point where my husband had to carry me into the epicurean. <laughs> <laughs> like, like over, your sh- over his shoulder, like a sack or like in his arms like the bodyguard? No, it looked like I had way too much to drink like I was <laughs> into the epicurean yeah. anyway we had thankfully we had the room because it was my birthday like there was 20 of us in this room so everyone was happy to you know knew me and knew that i needed to take my shoes off yes so my we were then going out partying afterwards oh. so my 16 year old daughter i made her take her shoes off and put her uh, put her shoes on me so she thought it was fabulous that she could wear these very expensive shoes going back you know, um, to the car park. Yes. Anyway, she then decides to go down the escalator <laughs> yes. in these very expensive shoes. They get the heel gets stuck oh, no. in the escalator. Yeah. The whole escalator gets shut down, <laughs> and my fr- my friend who was with us had to literally pull apart the crown escalator. <laughs> 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 Of it. Needless to say, they have never ever been worn again. And while they look beautiful in my wardrobe, my feet took a good two months to oh, heal. Oh, wow. Vicky, I need to know. You keep saying expe- how, how, how much, much is these expensive shoes? Give us a price. They- they were over a thousand dollars. <gasps> oh, were they? Oh, were they like Jimmy shoes, yeah. shoes or Louboutins or uh, something? Christian Louboutin. Yeah. Oh, so, and you know what? And, and, you, they, and you couldn't even wear them because they were painful. Did you try them on before no, you bought I them? Couldn't. Yeah, yeah, I, yes, yes, I did. Yeah, I was. I tried them on. And they looked amazing and they were perfect. But you know, I'm, I'm a high heel wearer, so I didn't think yes. that. I would have any problem no. with them, but literally the 10 minute walk from the car park oh, yes. to the Epicurean did that much damage to my feet that I could not wear any form of heels for a good two months. You so, can only yeah, wear them but, somewhere where you dropped at the door yeah. and you're sitting down the whole time yeah. and then you get back in the car yeah. and you go home. Have you worn them since? Yes. No, no. <laughs> they sit they sit on a um, on a shelf in my wardrobe, looking beautiful. <laughs> 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 they, they're art. They're now. a show shoe. They're just <laughs> art. Thank you, Vicky. Tina, hello. Hello, how are you? Good, Great, Tina. Tina. How dangerous are high heels, Tina? Oh, in my profession, uh, apparently very dangerous. I'm a flight attendant, mm-hmm. and um, last year in November, I was, um, I'm based in Perth, but I was travelling from Canberra to Brisbane, and um, travelling from the hotel to the airport with the crew and the pilots, and we're all chatting and having having a good time, and as we pulled up at the airport, um, we were in uh, a big maxi taxi, like these black Mercedes vans, yeah. and... Um, yeah, as we got there, um, sorry, sorry, I'm just pulling into work now. This is life As we got there, um, the pilot stepped out, and these vans have like these ele- electric stairs that kind of um, pull out when yes. the door opens. Yeah. And um, so the pilot steps out, and I was right behind the pilot, and didn't know that the stairs were still coming out and my heel, my um, eight centimetre heel caught on the edge of the um, the step and I went flying. The gorgeous, the handsome pilot caught me and um, 
as I twisted around, I've torn uh, all the ligaments around my right ankle oh. and uh, oh. one of the ligaments snapped off part of the ankle bone. No. Severed the severed some of the nerves across the top of my foot. Holy crap. a lot of damage. <laughs> and I'm still not flying. So I've been off work. I was off work for three months. I've just started back three weeks ago, but I'm not allowed to fly yet. So they just have me wandering around the airport at the moment. At, um, oh, my T1. God. What are you doing? Yeah. What operation that? are you doing, Tanny? Tanny, you would have required Pardon? an operation. Yeah, you have surgery? Um, they tried to avoid it because that would have been six to nine months off. Oh, so I may still potentially need surgery, but they've, um, for now they're trying... Uh, I've been doing rehab yeah. uh, pretty much every day since... The injury in November. It is workers' comp, though, right? Yep, workers' yeah, comp um, isn't as good as what I normally earn when I'm actually no. flying. Oh, so, uh, that's still, a shame. Still pays the bill, yeah. It's, mm. a, bit, it's a bit tight. God, but, I, did, I didn't um, think it was going to be this massive injury. I thought when you said you flew into the captain's yes, arms and, and then now you married. I thought, oh my God, <laughs> what an amazing meet well, you. I don't know what's better. <laughs> I thought it was better because if the pilot hadn't caught me, I think I would face plant. Oh, you would have? Yeah. My, broken my jaw. So um, <laughs> I would have to break my ankle and my nose and my jaw and my face. Yeah, I, right. I guess You're so. Right. Your face I is mean, your money maker. That's true. Thank you, <laughs> Tina. We're talking about the dangers of high heels. Do you have Jeez. a cautionary tale for us? That's crazy. Let's go yeah. to Candice in Mount Nazura. Hi, Candice. How you going, guys? Good, Candice. All right, um, warn us about heels. Okay, so I used to be a heel person massively, mm. um, then had kids <laughs> and then stopped, went pretty much to flats. Mm. And then a few years ago, after having my second daughter, I um, went to a show at Burswood Theatre with my sister and I was like, no, nah, I'm getting out the heels. And I had, I'm talking big, chunky, Whitner, like massive, massive, like death heels. Okay. Death heels? And I was, I, <laughs> like, like you talking yeah. like, like platformy <laughs> sort of ones. <laughs> Yeah, really big yeah, platforms. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I'm feeling good, feeling hot, going out, first time since having a baby. Yeah, lady. It's going to be great. Went to a, went to a show at Birds of Theatre. Mm. And um, in the intermission, all of the people from the show were walking around signing programs, giving yeah. autographs, taking photos. Oh. And my sister really liked one of them. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. And I said, no, go, go. She's not. I said, I'll go, I'll go. I'll take your program. Yeah. I fell down the entire flight of stairs. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, there's an impact you're looking for. How, how, yeah. So, so how, how how long were you falling for, do you think? <laughs> oh, I reckon at least probably a good 15, 20 stairs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and landed at the bottom, and the, the guy that my sister wanted the autograph from comes yep. over, few bar, picks me up. And my sister now has a program that reads, Thank You for Falling for Me. Oh. <laughs> so, what was the show? Uh, the Magicians. Oh, <laughs> The Magicians! <laughs> <laughs> the the magicians. That okay, hey, mate, your sister was, well, uh, was thought one of them was hot. Which, which magician did you think was hot? Uh, the Italian one. What? <laughs> <laughs> How do we go with the magicians? I can oh. never believe the magicians had I know. Like groupies. Yeah. Like some like fans. Proper fangirls. Oh, that wow. is so funny. Thank you, Candice. Uh, Liz is in Craigie. Hello. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, good, Liz. Liz. Okay, talk to us about the dangers of wearing high heels. Well, a few years ago, I was invited to my friend's wedding. Lovely day. Outdoor wedding. Uneven ground. Mm. Oh. Um, so we were instructed to wear flat because it would be easier. I wore flat. Unfortunately, not all the guests adhered to the advice. Mm. And so during the evening, this nice lady stumbled backwards yeah. and her stiletto pierced the back by my ankle, Ooh, pierced the, back. the inside oh. and um, uh, the most in- unbelievable pain ever yeah. where it went, the, uh, the stiletto went into my skin uh. And a big gaping hole, a lot of blood, oh. and um, ended up with three stitches yeah. and about three weeks worth of backwards and forwards to the doctors yeah. because it all got infected Infectious. because oh. of that. The, um, yeah. yeah, the piercing. The yeah. piercing into the skin, yeah. So it was quite an, quite an, in, uh, an eventful night. So <laughs> you were impaled by somebody else's high heel? Impaled by somebody else's. They fell backwards. And instead of stepping to the ground, they stepped into my leg. So, yes. so uh, what did that person do once they realised that their shoe was inside of your body? <laughs> well, well, in actual fact, she 
she moved away and it came straight out. Oh, oh well, that's good. <laughs> so did she continue to wear those shoes for the rest of the evening, even though they had your <laughs> DNA on them now? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yes, pretty much. Mind. Well, but the bit, I mean, I blacked out when it all happened oh, because it was please. just intense pain. Yeah, and so, yes. And then we had no, and then we tried to get to a doctor and we couldn't get anything done yes. then. So it was till the next day, we're at the hospital and it was just... Mate, it was a little bit full on, yes, I for would a have, while. But. When I came, when I came to finally, I would have walked up and slapped her in the face with my, <laughs> with my flat. <laughs> <laughs> they said flat. Follow the instructions, <laughs> woman. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. God, that's unbelievable. Yeah, Liz, one hundred and fifty dollars to spend at Autobahn Mechanical. You went through enough with that one. Yeah. Um, just minding your own business. That's coming your way. I was nearly going to go with Candice there just for. Uh, talk about the magicians, but that was kind of just for a pity thing. Oh, thanks for telling why her that, that she that, came close why, to winning, that, but did pity that her sister found one of the magicians. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Attractive. Do you reckon? <laughs> the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Hello, Ben. Did you hear Richard Porras this morning? I did. And and thoughts? Captivating. Ca- mate. I know. 20 years of radio, we've never <laughs> done anything like that. This could be the award, guys. It this is, could we, be the award. We know how much, um, uh, how many people are into ASMR, right? Yeah. Mm. And yet no one's ever thought, how can I make ASMR into a competition. Yes. You've done it. And you did it. Blue water all week or did he change no, it? No, no, I brought a, a selection of food colouring. I know. Can't wait to see the colour tomorrow. I know. Yeah. That's really something to hang out for. Isn't <laughs> the colour of the water on I the know. radio. <laughs> I promise yellow water by Friday. <laughs> yeah, I did bring in yellow and I went, oh yeah. no, that's probably not a great colour for it. <laughs> now, Ben, you were at the concert last night. How did you enjoy it, How buddy? How good was he? So good. Out of 10. 11. 10 out of 10. 10 oh, out of 10. 11. It's a big statement. Um, it's quite so, a big statement. So he wears a Fitbit, right, Ed? Yeah. Oh. What, what distance do you reckon he covers? Oh, okay. So he does walk around and so, okay, yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm going to say four kilometres. Is that just during the show uh, or during the show, for yeah. the whole day? During the show. I'm going to say yeah. higher okay. than four kilometres. Higher. Six Ten point, kilometres. Six point eight. I'll go with 10 then. 10. 10 kilometres on stage. That's amazing. Nah, Harry yeah. told me. <laughs> We're trying to make a game out of it, Harry. <laughs> this is why Harry's not involved in Richard Porras. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. The second one's full. <laughs> <laughs> You're bloody Harry. Stick to the early morning show, Harry. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.